we are doing the area debtors management please settle down we want a momentum because introduction is all over we are going to continue to do the problems in this chapter today also we saw that debtors investment investment in debtors arises because of credit sales when we block the money with the debtors if i invest the money in fixed assets i can produce and sell goods is it not like that when i invest the money in debtors there is obviously some advantages as well as the disadvantage what is the benefit of having debtors increased contribution sales increases contribution increases but the disadvantage or cost of having debtors are that debt interest lost on money invested in debtors number 3 is collection expenses etc any decision when the benefit exceeds cost it should be made always the decision should be rejected the four types of decision we are discussing namely credit period decision credit appraisal discount policy and collection policy so here all decision one thing surely needs to be calculated interest lost on debtors is a very important calculation in any problem for the data should be valued we value data under three approaches sales approach cost uh, total cost approach variable cost approach nothing given na use the sales approach if they give you only variable cost use the variable cost approach if they give you details regarding fixed cost also use the total approach then we did credit period problems fully in the first two classes whether to give 30 days credit or 90 days credit and so on higher more credit period is going to increase my debtors increase debtor obviously the advantage is increased contribution disadvantage is whatever i've been already discussed if i decrease the credit period debtor decreases decrease debtors lead to reduction in bad debts reduction in interest loss and the disadvantage is reduction in contribution same story only continues with the different name now called as credit appraisal credit appraisal means should i give credit to everybody or should i give credit only to restricted few if i am very lenient in giving credit anybody ask for installment i give the installment in such a case what happens is the advantage is what the sales will increase the contribution will increase in a lenient credit appraisal very less uh, strictness in credit appraisal means debtors will increase always increase in debtors have their own benefit and cost if the credit appraisal is what very strict debtors will decrease obviously sales will decrease contribution will decrease benefit is bad as reduction and others above that only we are now doing can i proceed or not let us do few more problems in this regard and then go for the discount policy we will be learning a very important concept called as cash discount and its implication in decision making can i proceed or not now tell me question number 12 please stop talking question number 12 settle down shall we start yes. govardhanagiri distributors makes all sales on credit basis please once each year it routinely evaluates the credit worthiness of all its customers the evaluation procedure ranks customers from 1 to 5 in order of increasing risk results of ranking are given below category of customers 1 2 3 4 5 % of bad debts none 1 3 9 and 30% average collection period 10 12 20 60 90 credit decision unlimited credit unlimited credit limited limited and no credit annual sales lost through credit restriction none none 36000 lakh and 80000 and 3 lakh 60000 variable cost ratio 75% opportunity cost of investment in debtors is 15% what will be the effect on profitability of extending full credit to category 3 4 and category fine is a question please i'll give you two minutes time go through the facts of the question before we start with the solution go through the question quickly can i proceed up yes. now 
this company when it sells categorize the customer into five categories so this may be based on their past track record category 1 2 3 4 and 5 category 1 is best they will never become what bad debts and they will pay in how many days 10 days category 2 that is a one person out of 199 may be what good and one may be bad and so on so they can classified into five categories company's present policy is they give unlimited credit how much they want they can sell it on what credit basis they give unlimited credit to category one and two who are considered to be what good customers and they give only restricted or limited credit to three four and five and in fact category five they give what no credit at all because they feel those customers are risky and they are somewhat careful about their appraise on giving the credit now due to this what happens is category one and category two you don't lose any sales because you give them what unlimited credit three four and five due to limiting their credit or not giving them credit at present we are losing sales or not how much you're losing 36,000, 1,80,000 and then 3,60,000. The question is, if we give for the remaining three categories also, what credit? Unlimited credit. Is it good or not? Is a question. Are you finding the question or not? So what is the question here? Is it good or not to give what? Unlimited credit to the remaining three categories. Tell me, what is the benefit of giving unlimited credit to the remaining three categories? The sales loss will not be lost. Right? What I lose the sales to the limited credit will not be what? Last. That means these will become extra sales for me. Yes or no? Yes, extra sales gives me what? Extra contribution. Add the sales. I'm employed by what? 25% PV ratio will give me the benefit of giving the unlimited credit to the three categories. Right or not? But what is the cost here? On these sales, I'm going to have 3%, 9%, and 13% extra balance. That is going to be increase in balance is the cost of giving unlimited credit to them is number one. The second risk is what? Extra sales, extra debtors. Extra debtors, interest loss also increases or the two costs. So if the benefit is more than cost, give the unlimited credit. Otherwise what? Do not give it. Is the answer for this particular sum. Everybody, are you comfortable or not? Let's do the solution together right on statement of cost benefit analysis let's write together statement of cost benefit analysis before that i just want to have a confirmation till now we have done for two classes debt task management right or not yes, those are comfortably following that chapter raise your hand sure are you surely following or not now note that this chapter is regularly asked in the examination. EC chapters only. Try to keep on revising these chapters. Nothing more here. Can I proceed? Even workbook sum is more than sufficient for the exam preparation. Can I proceed? Now. Statement of cost benefit analysis. Stop. Uh, two columns. Particulars. Amount. <coughs> Particulars and amount. Capital A. Benefit. Particulars, capital A, benefit. Unlike that. What is the benefit you having? Increase in contribution. Benefit, increase in contribution. Benefit is increase in contribution. No other benefit now? Now, capital B, cost. Capital B, cost. Increase in bad debts. Increase in bad debts. Second cause is what? Increase in interest lost. Increase in interest lost on investment in debtors. Increases, increase in interest lost on investment in debtors. Increase in interest lost on investment in debtors. Total. Total. Capital C, net benefit. A minus B. Capital C, net benefit. A minus B. Capital C, net benefit. A minus B. Everybody comfortable or not? Now, let's do working note number one. 
increase in contribution right working out number one increase in contribution we'll do one by one right in the main statement working out number one increase in contribution increase in contribution online that right a pv ratio is equal to please tell me pv ratio is equal to what hundred percent minus variable cost ratio PV ratio is equal to 100% minus variable cost ratio which is equal to 100% minus 75% 100% minus 75% equals how much 25% is equal to 25% can I proceed next small b increase in sales when I give unlimited credit, all the sales loss will not be lost. Yes or no? When I don't lose sales, it means what? Increase in sales. Yes or no? Now, increase in sales. Point B, increase in sales is equal to 36,000 plus. Tell and write. 36,000 plus 1,80,000 plus 3,60,000. 36,000 plus 1,80,000 plus. 3,60,000 is equal to how much? 5,76,000 increase in sales is 5,76,000 understood or not? C increase in contribution is equal to C increase in contribution is equal to increase in contribution is equal to what into what? 5,76,000 into 25% Increase in contribution is equal to 5,76,000 into 25%. Tell me the number. 1,44,000. Increase in contribution is equal to 1,44,000. Go to the main statement and write increase in contribution 1,44,000. Main statement write increase in contribution 1,44,000. Lack and 44,000. Accept or not? Next. Working out number 2. What working out number 2? Increase in bad debts. We cannot add the sales and apply a percentage because it differs from each and each category. Yes or no? Increase in bad debts. Increase in bad debts. Three columns. Category, computation, amount. Increase in bad debts. Three columns. Category, computation, amount. Category, computation and amount. Category three. In a category 1 and 2 sales does not increase so bad debts also does not increase category 3 tell me how much is the extra sales in category 3 tell me how it is 36,000 into what are the bad debts percentage 3% category 3 36,000 into 3% 36,000 into 3% amount column 1080 1080 amount is 1080 1080 can I proceed or not next Category 4. Category 4. Tell me the calculation. 1,80,000 into 9%. Category 4. 1,80,000 into 9%. Tell me the amount. 16,200. 16,200. Category 5. Category 5. 3,60,000 into 30%. 3,60,000 into 30, so much? 1,8,000. Category 5, 1,8,000. Total all the three. Tell me what is the total of the bad debt loss? 1,25,000, 280. 1,25,280. So increase in bad debts is 125,280. I hope you are all following or not. Go to the main statement and write. Increase in bad debts, 1,25,280. 1,25,280. Everybody respond. Can I proceed? Last working out is what? Increase in interest lost. Increase in interest lost. Increase in interest lost. We'll do together. Increase in interest loss. Have the three columns. Category, computation and then amount. Category, computation and then amount. Category, computation and then amount. 
Shall we start doing together or not? No. First is one. Category three. Category three. What is the increase of sales? Remember increase sale? 36,000. Okay. I should value at sales approach of variable cost approach of variable cost approach into 75%. 36,000 into 75% into what is the debt collection period given the how many days? 20 days into 20 by 360 into what is the interest percentage 15 percent huh? into 15 percent Monday plan tell me 36,000 into 75 percent into 20 by 3 into 15 how much going to be 225 rupees category interest the three interest last year is 225 rupees next category 4 category 4 do along with me what are the extra sales 1,80,000. Extra sales 1,80,000. In which what is the variable cost ratio? 75%. Into how many days credit? 60 divided by 360. Into how much percentage interest loss? 15%. Tell me the number. 3,000? 3,375. 3,375. Everybody, yes or no? Now. Last is what? Category 5. Category 5. I think sales is 3,60,000. Am I right or not? Into what the variable cost of sale? 75%. Into 90 by 360. Yeah? 90 by 360 into 15%. Is equal to 10,125. 10, Please add and tell me the total. Is it how much here? One person? Thirteen thousand seven twenty-five. The total is thirteen thousand seven twenty-five. Number right or not? Now, please go to the main statement and write interest loss. How much rupees? Thirteen thousand seven twenty-five. Thirteen thousand seven twenty-five. Thirteen seven twenty-five. Okay. Can you tell me the total of the cost? What are the cost total? One lakh thirty-nine thousand five. One thirty-nine double zero five. One thirty-nine double zero five. So benefit rating is one lakh twenty-four. Cost is one lakh thirty-nine thousand five. Net benefit is how much is? Four thousand nine ninety-five. Net benefit is four double nine five. Four thousand nine ninety-five. Tell me, should I give unlimited credit or not? Yes. Write down conclusion. Always exam la conclude. For that also mark is there. Okay, conclusion. They should know what they are doing now. So conclusion, recommended to give unlimited credit. Recommended to give unlimited credit to the remaining three categories also. Recommended to give unlimited credit to the remaining three categories also. Recommended to give unlimited credit to the remaining three categories also because because the net benefit is positive. Because the net benefit is positive. The net benefit is positive. Everybody, are you comfortable or not? No. Take the next question. If I'm right, we have completed question number 13 in the last class. Right above? No. Take question number 14. It is an exercise problem in the study material. Problem seems big, but the calculation is not so big. It is a problem I should understand properly. Then the remaining sum are very simple only. Take question number 14. Superstar Limited is manufacturer of various electronic gadgets. Annual turnover for the year 2002 was 730 lakhs. Company has a wide network of sales outlets all over the country. Turnover is spread evenly for each of the 50 weeks of the working year. All sales are for credit and sales within a week are also spread evenly over each of the 5 working days. 
All invoicing of credit sales is carried out at the head office in Mumbai or in Bombay. Sales documentation is sent by post daily from each location to the head office for the past two years. Delays in preparing and dispatching invoices were noticed. As a result, only some of the invoices were dispatched in the same week and the remainder the following week. An analysis of the delay in invoicing being the interval between the date of sale and the date of dispatch of invoice indicates the following pattern. Number of days in delay in invoicing 3 days, 4 days, 5 days and 6 days. Percentage of weekly sales 20, 10, 40 and 30. A further analysis indicated that the data stake on an average 36 days of credit before paying. The period is measured from the day of dispatch of the invoice rather than the date of sale. It is proposed, it is not if laba, it is proposed to hire an agency for undertaking the invoicing work at various locations. Superstar Limited expects to save 4,000 rupees per month in postage costs. The agency has assured that the maximum delay would be reduced to 3 days under the following pattern. Number of days delay in invoicing 0, percentage of weekly sales 40%, 1, 40%, 2, 20, three, 20%. The agency has also offered additionally to monitor the collection which will reduce the credit period to 30 days. All working funds are borrowed from a local bank at a simple interest rate of 20% per annum. The agency has quoted a fee of 2 lakhs per annum for the invoicing work and 2 lakh 50,000 per annum for monitoring collections and is willing to offer discount of 50,000 provided both the work are given. You are required to advise Superstar Limited about the acceptance of the agency's proposal. Working should form part of the answer. That's a question. Please read the question. Try to understand. Generally, you read and try to see what the question is all about. Then we can just start doing the solution. Don't always expect me to explain the question and then do the solution. You put an effort on your own first time to at least read and see what the question is all about. Then you will be able to guess how much you are able to understand by reading the question for the first time on your own. Okay. Please go through the question. Make use of the time. Read the question. Last. Okay. See. <coughs> the annual sales made by this company. How many lakhs here? 730 lakhs. Cash sales or credit sales? Credit sales. That means on this sales, debt ask will be there. Read or not? Yes, sir. What is debtors sales into debt collection period divided by 360 is, is the debtors. Now, the debt collection period is 36 days. Let us take the first instance. How many days here? 36 days. But the customer takes 36 days not from the date in which I am selling, but date in which they receive the invoice. Are you in front of what I am saying? Generally, in capital goods and all, you purchase the goods, they will send the invoice to your house, right or not. that is to the uh, factory, they will be sending the invoices. So, date on which they have the invoice, from that date only, they will count to what? 36. Respond, are you following or not? No. At present, what is happening is, the invoicing, there is a delay, there is a delay in invoicing. From the date of sales, it may take 3 days to invoice or 4 days to prepare invoice or 5 days or how many days here? 6 days. In other words, for 20% of my sales, the delay is how many days? 3 days. Another 10% of my sales, the delay is how many days here? 4 days and so on. Everybody following or not? In that case, I can say like this. 730 lakhs is the sales. What are sales here? 730 lakhs. The all the 730 lakh sales does not have the same debt collection period. Doesn't have the same debt collection period. For example, 20% of my sales, how much of my sales are? 20% of the sales, I get the money only after 39 days. How many days are? 39 days. How 39 days? 
I take three days to prepare the invoice and he pays only after how many days here? 36 days. So debt collection paid is 39 days for 20% of my sales. Yes or no? For another 10% of my sales, the debt collection is only how many days here? 40 days. Four days I take to prepare the invoice and 36 days he takes to what? Pay. It's going to be how many days here? 40 days. Like that, debt collection period is different for what? Different proportion of sales. In the present scenario, respond, are you following or not? Yes, sir. Now, there is an agency which says that, no problem, I will do the invoicing work for you. Because you do the production, you do the sales, you also do what? Invoicing. Now, you make some delay in preparing what? Invoice. You give me the invoicing work. I will do as a, what is a back office work. I will do the full invoicing for you. Is what the agency said. Are you funny not? And the agency said, if I do invoicing for you, 40% of the sales, there will be no delay. Today is sold now? Today is the invoice is dispatched. Are you funny what I am saying? For another 40% of the sales, the maximum delay how many days here? One day. And the last 20, how many days? Three days. Are you in front of what I am saying? In that case, the debtors pay after 36 days for how many sales? 40% of my sales. Listen here. After how many days? 37 days. For another 40% of the sales. And after how many days? 39 days. For another 20% of my sales. If I give the invoicing work alone to the subcontracting, yes or no? But the agency says, Along with invoicing, along with invoicing, you also give me what? Collection job. That is, I will go and collect the money for you. If you give me along with invoicing, what job? Collection work. Then I will collect the money in how many days? Yeah? 30 days. In that case, the money will be received in how many days? 30 days. For 40% of my sales, 31 days. For another 40%. And 33 days for the balance 20%. Everybody, yes or no? Yes, and for this, what happens is, Invoicing work, if we give him, they will be charging how much rupees for doing the invoicing work? 2 lakhs. If we give them invoicing as well as what? Uh, the collection, they said I will be doing how much rupees? 4 lakh 50,000. And I will give you how much discount? 15% discount. I will do it for 4 lakh rupees. Everybody, are you following or not? And moreover, when you give invoicing work, your postage charge will be what? Saved. Everyone, what the postage charge here? 4,000. That can be saved on annual basis. Are all the details given? I only explain the question. Everybody, following or not? Yes, now, what is the decision I have to make? Whether to give invoicing or invoicing and collection to the agency. Yes or no? So should I give or not? It depends on the cost benefit analysis. Tell me the benefit. What is the benefit of giving invoicing and a collection to the agency? Yeah? The reduction in debtors. They collect the money earlier or not? Reduction in debtors. Thereby reduction in what? Uh, interest loss is the benefit. Yes or no? What are the cost of giving this work here? Yeah? Cost is contribution loss nothing. What is the cost here? Yeah? Savings and postage cost and second cost is what? The agency fees. These two are going to be the cost. The only working in this problem is that particular interest cost calculation. Everybody following or not? Postage? Oh, sorry, pa. I think there are two benefits. One is what? Interest saved on reduced data. Number two is what? Postage savings. Accepted. What are the cost here? <coughs> The agency fees is the only cost accepted. Can I proceed or not? No. That's why the first cost benefit analysis and then go for the working. Okay, right on. Question number 14. Question number 14. Cost benefit analysis. Please. Shh. Question number 14. Cost benefit analysis. Cost benefit analysis. Can we start down? Now, particulars, option 1, option 2. I have two choices now. So, particulars, option 1, option 2. Suppose both the option, the net benefit is negative. What I will do? Continue with the existing. Don't go to agency at all. Are you fine or not? So, particulars, option 1, option 2. Three columns, particulars, option 1, option 2. Can we start or not? Now, capital A, benefit. And before that, sorry, option 1 bracket right, only invoicing. Option 1 left, bracket right, only invoicing. If you know what that option is not, so option 1 is only invoicing. What is option 2? Invoicing and collection. 
Option 2, invoicing and collection. Option 2 is invoicing and collection. May I be able to follow up? Yes, sir. Can I proceed or not? Next. Capital A, benefit. Capital A, benefit. Unlike that. What the first benefit? Reduction in interest lost. First benefit is reduction in interest lost. Reduction in interest lost. First benefit is reduction in interest lost. You are following, huh? Reduction in interest loss. Next, second benefit, savings in postage. Suru suru parangya, savings in postage. Savings in postage. Total. Right? Total. Capital B, cost. I'm not feeling well, Abba? What, you can go out and come? Okay, okay. Sell, Abba. You don't suggest here. Yeah. I am here. Can I put it now? Can it be cost? Can it be cost? Agency fees. Cost agency fees. Cost agency fees. Capital C net benefit A minus B. Capital C net benefit A minus B. Capital C net benefit A minus B. Okay. Can you start or not? No. Two numbers can be straight away written. Can you write or not? No. Savings in postage cost. Every month, how much is saved? 4,000. How many months here? 12 months. How much is going to be saved? 48,000. Write in option 1, option 2, 48,000, 48,000. In option 1 and option 2, write 48,000, 48,000. Option 1, option 2, 48,000, 48,000. Is that right? Should I repeat it? Can I proceed? 48,000, 48,000. Can I proceed? Now, next step. Uh, cost is agency fees na given. Even give only invoicing, what the cost? 2 lakhs. Only invoicing cost is 2 lakhs. Invoicing and collection, what the cost? 4 lakhs. Invoicing and collection, the cost is 4 lakhs. Invoicing and collection, the cost is 4 lakhs. Are you following or not? No. Only working note to be done is what? Interest loss. Write down. Working note. Working note, calculation of, please don't talk, calculation of interest lost. Working note, calculation of interest lost. Calculation of interest lost. Can you start or not? No. First, in that right, capital A. Existing interest lost. At present, how much I am losing on calculate? Existing interest lost. Existing interest lost. Okay. Shall we start or not? Now. See. Write one bit or another. First, what is my annual sales? 730 lakhs. Write the amount, tell me in full. Okay, I'll calculate in lakhs, 730 lakhs into, in this. For how much percent of my sales, delay is 3 days. How many percent of my sales here? 20%. 20 percent. 730 lakhs into 20 percent. For this portion of sales, for this portion of sales, I delay invoicing by how many days? 3 days. From then I collect how many days sir? 36 days. From today how many days it takes sir? 39 days. For this sale, the debt collection period is 39 divided by 360. Now, this is going to be the debt as for 20% of my sale. Yes or no? Into on this, how much percentage I am losing as interest? Tell me. You know percent, Bob? 20 percent, 20 percent. Now, tell me the number. 730 lakhs into 20 percent into 39 by this into 20 percent. Tell me the number fully. What is the number fully? 3 point? That is 3 lakh 16 thousand. That is number correct. Now, 3 lakh 16 thousand. 3 lakh 16 thousand. 333. Don't disturb. 3 lakh 16 thousand. 333. Yes or no? Now, continue. Next. 730 lakhs into. For another, how much person are the sales? 10% uh? 10% for another 10% of the sales 
The invoicing is delayed by how many days? Four days. From there, I collected how many days? 36 days. What is the delay? 40 days. 40 by 360 into 20%. Correct number. Tell me the number. 162,000. 222. 1 lakh 62,222. 162,222. Can I proceed? Now, next. 730 lakhs into for another 40% of my sales. For another 40% of my sales, I delay the invoicing by how many days? 5 days. I collect after 36 days. The total DCP is how many days? 41 by 360. I think you're all able to understand my computation or not? No. In how much percent interest loss? 20 percent. Number? 6 lakhs? 65,000? Triple 1. 6 lakhs? 65,000? Triple 1. 6 lakhs? 65,000? Triple 1. Now, last. 730 lakhs into... For another how many percent of my sales? 30 percent of my sales. Number cut up? The delay in invoicing is how many days? 6 days. Six days. So, I collect after how many days? 42 days. 40 by 360 into 20%. What is the number? 5 lakh. Exactly, yeah. 5 lakh 11,000. If I total the interest last is how much, yeah? 16,54,000? At present, this is what I am losing as interest in debtors. Everybody following or not? No. Did you understand the calculation? Huh? Very simple, yeah. Earlier, for entire sales, we had one debt collection period, right or not? In this case, for 20% of my sales, the debt collection period is going to be how much? 39 days. For another 10% of my sales, the DCB is 40 days and so on. Hence, I am forced to calculate elaborately the interest lost on investment in debt task. Respond, are you have the clarity or not? Now, next, capital B. What is capital B? Interest loss, option 1. Capital B, interest lost, option 1. Interest loss, option 1. In option 1, I am going to give the agency only what? Invoicing and not what? Collecting. Shall we start doing together? Now tell me, 730 lakhs into 40% of the sales of 40% of the sales. The delay in invoicing is zero days. That means I collect after how many days of sale? 36 days. Am I right or not? Now, into 36 divided by 360. In the how much percent interest last? 20 percent. Tell me the number. 730 lakhs into 40 percent into 36 percent. How much number? 1 percent? 5 lakh 84,000. 5 lakh 84,000. Can I proceed? Next. For another. 40% of the sales, 730,000 into 40%. The delay in invoicing, how many days? Yeah? One day. I collect after how many days? 37 days of sales into 20%. Tell me the number. 6 lakhs? 600 triple 2. Yes or no? 6 lakhs 222. 6 lakhs 222. Now, last step. For balance 20% of the sales, the delay in invoicing is 3 days above? No. So what is the debt collection between 39 by 360 into 20%? Tell me the number. 3,16,333. If I total, what is the interest loss under option 1? Tell me how much the number here? 15 lakhs. 15 lakhs 555. 15 double zero 555. Cut up. 15 lakhs 555. Now, next is what? Capital C. What is capital C? Interest last. Option 2. Interest last. Option 2. Interest last. Option 2. Everything is same. Instead of collecting in 36, how many days? Yeah? 30 days. That's all. Can I do it together or not? No. First write 730 lakhs into 40% into 
30 by 360 into 20%. 730 lakhs into 40 percent into 30 by 360 into 20 percent. What is the number here? 486,667. 486,667. Now, next, 730 lakhs into 40 percent into everybody tell me the number. 31 by 360 into 20 percent. 730 lakhs into 40 percent into 31 is into 20. How much number? 5 lakhs. 2888. 5 lakhs. 880? I'll leave it here. 889. Have it. Okay. Now, next. 730 lakhs into 20 percent into how many days here? 33 days divided by 360 into 20 percent. I want the number 267,000. 667. Number some number is 667. Now tell me the total and the option to what the total 12 lakhs 57,000 223. Okay, 223. 12,57,223. I hope everybody understanding it or not. No. Please go to the main statement. We are going to write on what? The decrease in interest loss. Benefit. Right or not? No. Please tell me. What is the existing interest loss? Amount I want? 16,51,666. In option when reduced to what? 15,555. Tell me what is the decrease from 16 lakhs to 15 lakhs? 1 lakh 54,111. Write in the main statement 1 lakh 54,111. 154,111. Option 1 decrease in interest loss is 154,111. 1 lakh 54,111. Everybody understanding it or not? Now, option 2. What is option 2 interest loss here? 3 lakh 27,000. 3 lakh 97,000. 443. 3,97,443. 3,97,443. Yes or no? Now, please tell me the total benefit. Option 1. What is the total benefit? Tell me the number. How many days here? 2 lakhs. 2,000. Triple 1. 202. Triple 1. 2 lakh 2,111. 2,2111. Option 2, tell me the total. 4 lakhs. 4 lakh 47,000. Wait, yeah, stop. What is the number? 4 lakh 44,543. Number 1. I cannot believe in one number here. Please. 4 lakh 45,443. Number get up 445, 443. Actually, yeah. no. Matter over. Come to the next step. Capital C, net benefit. Shh. What is net benefit? Option 1. 2000, triple 1. 2111. Yes, now next step. 45,000, 443. 45,000, 443. Shh. 45, 443. Now tell me, option 1 or option 2? Option 2. Write down. Conclusion. Recommended to give. Stop talking. Recommended to give. Recommended to give. Both invoicing and collection work. Recommended to give. Both invoicing and collection work to the agency. Recommended to give. Both invoicing and collection work to the agency. Recommended to give both invoicing and collection work to the agency. Tell me, everybody, comfortable or not, is one of the exercise volume in the study material. Can I proceed or not? No. Okay. 15 and 16. I'll come back and do after I complete the next slot called as cash discount. Please. We'll move on to the next area called as discount policy or cash discount. 
after i complete that sum i'll surely come on to question number 15 and then question number 16 okay give the heading discount policy give the heading discount policy or cash discount stop talking please give the heading discount policy or cash discount discount policy or cash discount can we start or not now see let us have a elaborate discussion and then have a brief notes and then start doing the problems in this regard discount policy or cash discount Don't talk. I want full silence before I start. Please. Okay. See, what happens is discounts are offered by the companies on their sales suppose the sales value at 100 rupees now they may say it is enough if you pay 98 rupees then they are said to be offering a two percent discount to the customer there are two types of discounts which are offered which is in the cost sheet chapter also at the beginning namely trade discount and then what cash discount trade discount is generally given to boost the sales to promote what sales person purchasing in bulk will be offered discount suppose i go and purchase thousand books okay then they may be selling the hundred rupee book at what 19 rupees because for them it is a bulk order they may be offering a discount but a person purchasing one or two books may be getting it only at what the normal selling price such a discount that is given to bulk orders are called as what discount? Trade discount. Above that we are not discussing in this debtors management. We are discussing another type of discount which is called as what? Cash discount. What is a cash discount? It is a discount given to motivate the customer to pay the money earlier. What is cash discount? Discount given to motivate the customer to pay the money earlier. For example, I give customer 40 days credit. I give also how many days credit? 40 days credit. But I say, if you pay in 10 days, if you pay within what? 10 days, you can take 2% discount. Are you following what I am saying? In that case, if a customer pays in 40 days, he has to pay how much rupees? 100 rupees. If he pays in 30 days, how much rupees? 100 rupees. Pays in 20 days, how much rupees? 100 rupees. Suppose he pays in what? 10 days. He has to pay only how much rupees here? 98. Take 2% discount for paying the money earlier. This is what we call it as what? Cash discount. Everybody, are you following or not? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, tell me what is a cash discount? Discount given to motivate the customer to pay money earlier is what we call it as cash discount. Point number one, accept it. Um, yes, now. Next. In most of the cash discount problem, there will be a term or a phrase given. We should know how to read it first. Okay. Suppose like this given. 2 by 10 net 40. They will give like this. 2 by 10 net 40. What is the meaning of this 2 by 10 net 40? How do I read it is? Normally, he can pay in how many days? 40 days. But if you pay in? 10 days, take 2% discount. That's how I have to read it. And what I am saying is the standard term always given. Tell me how to read this number here. Tell me. Normally pay in 40 days. If you pay in, take how much? 2% discount. Accept or not? No. I'll tell you. You just read and tell me for this. 3 by 15 net 65. What is the meaning of that? Normally pay in 65 days. If you pay in 15 days, take 3% discount. This is how one should be reading a cash discount term. Everybody, are you following or not? No. First stage of discussion is over. Let me go for the next one. Tell me, what is a cash discount? 
discount given to motivate the customer to pay the money earlier. How it will be given? 2 by 10, net 30 means pay in 40 days. If you pay in 10 days, take 2% discount. Is what till now we have learned. Can I push or not? Now, the second stage of discussion. Okay. What is the advantage of giving a cash discount? Tell me. Company is giving a discount or not? What the advantage of giving a cash discount by the company? Tell me what the advantage of giving cash discount? They receive the money earlier. When the money is received earlier, debt collection period reduces. Yes, sir. When debt collection period reduces, what reduces? Debt loss reduces. Interest block is going to be reduced. Yes, or no? Yes, sir. So the first advantage is what? Reduction in interest loss on debt loss is the first advantage of having what? A reduction in the say, giving a cash discount. Point number one. Yes or no? Yes. Number two, cash discount is also going to reduce my bad debts. Yes, because anybody who is taking a discount will pay the money and take the discount. It is not done. So it is motivating the customer to pay money. It is generally reducing what? Bad debts for the company also. The second advantage of having a cash discount is reduction in bad debts. Respond. Yes or no? These are the two advantages a company has by giving what? Cash discount. The benefit of giving cash discount is reduction in interest lost on debtors. Second benefit is what? The reduction in bad debts. What is the cost of giving cash discount? The discount itself. So, instead of getting 100, I get only how much? 98. 2 rupees I am losing or not? The discount itself is what the cost. Naturally, when the cost exceeds, the benefit exceeds cost, give the cash discount. Otherwise, what? Don't give the cash discount. Here is the next stage of discussion. Everybody, are you following or not? So, two stages are over. We are going to have the last discussion. Then you can have a notes in this regard and start doing the problem. Can I present a third stage or not? No. Okay. Forget about bad debts. Suppose no reduction in bad debts. Leave it. Okay. That means there are only two things. Discount versus interest. Yes, sir. Isn't it correct? Yes. Discount versus what? Interest. Very simple. Suppose a company interest rate is 15%. What is the company interest rate? Yeah? 15%. The cash discount term is 2 by 10 net. 40. 2 by 10 net 40. Understand this. Company pays this 2 percent. Company what? Pays this 2 percent. Could get the money early. This 2 percent discount is a benefit or cost to the company or cost to the company. So it is incurring the 2 percent cost to get the money earlier. Yes or no? So, what is the advantage in getting the money earlier? Because on the money you got earlier, you can earn a 15% interest. Everybody, are you following what I am saying? See, I can now compare the thing in percentages. Leave bad debts. There are some sums without what? Bad debts. This is what is going to be the discussion. Now, listen here. The company pays 2% discount. Why pay 2% discount? To get the money earlier. Is the cost of getting the money earlier. So no, if I get the money earlier, I have an option. If I already borrowed loan at 15%, I can repay loan, save cost of capital. Yes, sir. Or if I am having no loan, at least what? Make investment in FD and earn some 15% interest. Yes or no? Whenever you get the money earlier, you can earn some amount on that either by what? Repaying loan or earning interest. Everybody following or not? So now tell me, when I give 2% cash discount, I am getting how much percent benefit? 15% interest benefit. Yes or no? So the interest is 15%. The discount cost is how much percent? 2%. Should I give discount or not? In a question, now you can repeat interest. That is, when I get the money earlier, how much I can earn as interest? 15%. To get that money, how much I have to pay? 2%. Earning 15%, giving 2%. Should I give a discount or not? Yes. We should not say like that. We should not want to say like that because this 15% interest is per annum. It is always expressed as what? Per annum. Any bank interest will be always expressed in what? Per annum basis. It is a per annum interest. So, no. Now, next. That is. I will get 15 rupees on 100 rupees only if I get the 100 rupees one year earlier. Yes, sir. The so if I deposit for one year only, I can get the how much rupees? Yeah? 15 rupees. The interest rate is always expressed as what? Prana. But I don't pay 2% to get the money one year earlier. I pay the 2% and get only money what? 30 days earlier. Respond yes or no? 2% is the cost of getting money 30 days earlier and not what the one year earlier. This is a non annualized discount. This is what the annualized interest rate. These two cannot be compared. Yes or no? 
Can I compare an annual benefit with a non-annual cost? Ah? Not possible. So what I should do is, first I should annualize the cash discount and then only compare. Everybody, are you following what I am saying? Yeah. So, when you want to compare a cash discount percentage with an interest percentage, I cannot compare per se. What I should do first? Uh, annualize it and then only go for the comparison. Right or not? In that case, now I have to know how to calculate annual cash discount or not? No. It is very simple. I will first write the formula and then substitute. I will write here ACD. ACD means what? Annualized cash discount. ACD is equal to cash discount divided by 100 minus cash discount into 360 divided by credit period before discount minus credit period after discount. And if you want, multiply by 1 into 100 gives you the annualized cash discount. Now, by heart, it, what is annualized cash discount formula? Tell me. Cash discount divided by 100 minus cash discount into 360 divided by credit period before discount minus credit period after discount. You want multiply by what? 100. In the back, can I push it or not? No. I'll do this for this particular problem. What is this? 2 percent is non annual. I'll make it as what? Annualized cash discount. Can I write it here or not? No. See. I forgot the formula, then the previous page, no? you tell me now, what the formula here? Yeah. Cash is going to divide by 100 minus cash is I can, now I remember, can I go see? No. Shall we start huh? now? See. The term is 2 by 10 net 40. Can you start or not? No. Please. Annualized cash discount is equal to what is cash discount? 2 divided by 100 minus 2. Please. Into what is before discount? 40. After discount? 10. 40 minus 10 into obviously 100 for percentage. Can tell me the number here? 2 by 98 into 360 by 30 into 100. Somebody was number? You have a person, 20? Stop talking. 24.48 percentage. Please leave that decimal. 24.48 percent. Now, I am paying an annualized cost of 24.48 as what? Cash discount. I am getting an interest benefit of only 15%. Will they pay 24% to save 15%? Uh? No. I will not give ta cash discount. Everybody following the discussion or not? I will tell the logic of the formula next. Before that, able to understand what I am doing or not? No. Uh, what I am saying is, don't compare 15% interest rate with what? 2% discount rate. Interest is a benefit, discount is a cost. That you understand or not? Because if I get the money earlier, I can earn interest or save interest. I can earn interest by depositing the money received earlier or I can save interest by what? Repaying the loans, etc. But anyhow, I can earn or save interest. It is a benefit of getting the money earlier. Yes or no? But to get the money earlier, what I have to pay? Cash discount. Now the interest earned or saved is 15%. The cash discount paid is what? 2%. Can I say discount paid is less? So go for the cash discount offering? No. The interest is expressed as annual interest rate. But discount is not annual. It is only what? Non-annual. I want to annualize it. This annualized cash discount only. I found as how much percent? 24%. 0.48. Now my comparison is right. I save 15% interest by giving how much percent cash discount? 24.48%. Should I give cash discount? I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't because the cost is more than benefit. Is a way of answering those types of questions. Point number one. Accept or not? Number yes, no. Yes, sir. sir, what is this formula all about? Very simple. Please. Shh. I receive money. I receive what? Money. How many days earlier? 30 days earlier. How much I receive 30 days earlier? 19 rupees. Correct. I am receiving how much rupees here? 98 rupees. So, 
the customer is funding me that is instead of 40 days in 10 days he is giving me how much money 98 on the dollar can earn my interest so no no 98 rupees is the money i'm getting for getting this money of 98 rupees, I am paying how much rupees cost? 2 rupees cost as cash discount. Yes or no? So, it is 2 divided by 98 is the cost of discount. I like a cost of capital. Exactly. Because getting the money earlier is like borrowing money. Yes or no? He has to pay normally after 40 days. He pays after what? 10 days. Now, something similar to what? Borrowing money. I am borrowing how much rupees here? 98 rupees. For this, what the cost I am suffering? 2 rupees sales loss. 2 by 98 is the cost on the money got earlier yes or no this 2 by 90 is the cost of getting money for 360 days huh? only 30 days huh? only that he does not pay me one year earlier he pay, he gives me 19 only what 30 days earlier in that case this 2 by 98 i can say this 2 by 90 is nothing but what cost of getting money only how many days earlier 30 days had he given me one year earlier, it should be what? Into 360. He is going to give me what? Annual. Into 100 gives you in percentage. This is what we call as the annualized cash discount. In a par it or not? Yes or no? Now, see. Slowly, I can see my voice raising. What is annualized cash discount formula? Cash discount by 100 minus cash discount into 360 by credit period before discount minus credit period after discount into 100. Point number one, accept or not, the meaning is very simple. I get how much money? 98 rupees. For this, how much the cost here? 2 rupees. 2 by 98 is the cost of discount. Yes or no? The cost of capital. This 2 rupees I am paying to get the money one year earlier? No. I pay this 2 rupees to get the money how many days earlier? 30 days earlier. So if I get the money one year earlier, it should be what? Into 360. Gives you the annual cash discount. This should only be compared with the interest rate. This is the last discussion we made. Everybody is so no. Almost. We have made an introduction to this area called as cash discount. More interesting areas will come as you start doing the problems in this regard. In working in this data management, only little bit difficult area is what? This cash discount. Otherwise, others are all very simple and straightforward calculations only. Can we start or not? Now, have you given the heading? Cash discount up. Yes, sir. Right on. Point number one.